BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Chemistry Covalent Bonds. We did ionic bonds in the last video. This is all about covalent bonds. So here are two chlorine atoms uh, and they've got seven electrons in their outer shell. They'd rather have eight. So what they do is they get together and they share a couple of electrons. Okay, and here is a, a dot and cross diagram for a chlorine molecule, Cl2. Okay, you see the dots are from one atom, the crosses are from another atom, and then we have this bond in the middle. And that is a covalent bond. Ionic bonding is swapping, covalent bonding is sharing. Ah, nice. Okay, and this is a dot and cross diagram. Here's another one. This is uh, an ammonia molecule, NH3. So a nitrogen and three hydrogens. And here's our dot and cross diagram. So the hydrogens are happy because they've got two electrons now. And the nitrogen is happy because it's got eight. So NH3, that's ammonia. Uh, this is CH4 which you should know is methane. And here's our dot and cross diagram. You need to be able to draw these diagrams, dot and cross diagrams. So CH4. This is important because the, the shape of it is called a, a tetrahedron. And in organic chemistry, uh, tetrahedrons are important. Organic is basically with carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Um, uh, tetrahedron, CH4 is a tetrahedron. Now look at this, we have uh, two oxygens and a carbon and the oxygen has got six outer shell electrons, it wants another two. The, uh, the carbon has got four outer shell electrons it wants another four so what happens is we get this we get double bonds so uh, they share four electrons there's four electrons being shared there and that is a double bond and you can also get triple bonds as well so this is carbon dioxide co2 and here we see some double bonds This is a special type of bond which you need to know about. It's called a dative covalent bond. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that uh, the electrons come from the same atom. So the electrons in that bond, that's the dative bond there, those electrons have come from the nitrogen, but the, the hydrogen's electron has been lost. And so the whole thing is positive. Okay, and this is an ammonium, yeah, NH4 plus, it's an ammonium uh, ion. Okay, and this special type of bond, a dative covalent bond. They're not very common, and if you're going to learn an example, learn this one. What do the strength of covalent bonds depend on? Well, they'll depend on the distance between the nuclei, and that's called the bond length. And basically, they'll, they'll be stronger if the, if the nuclei are shorter covalent bonds are stronger than long covalent bonds. Okay? So it depends on the bond length. The shorter the bond length, the stronger the bond. And then multiple bonds, like double bonds, are stronger than single bonds, and triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, etc. So it depends on the bond length, and it depends on whether it's a single or a double or a triple bond. Here are some questions for you to have a go at. If you're in my class, this would be a homework. So draw a dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in the following. So H2S and OH minus. Uh, a nitrate, NO3 minus, 
uh, has this structure and included in there is a dative bond. What is a dative bond, also known as a coordinate bond? What is a dative bond? Uh, and then lastly, what affects the strength of a covalent bond? This isn't the end of the video because there's something else I want to talk about. Look at this. This is a hydrogen fluoride molecule. So you've got a hydrogen atom and a fluorine atom and they're sharing a couple of electrons but they're not going to share them equally. Okay, the, the fluorine is going to get a bigger share of these electrons. If you like, the electrons are going to spend a lot more time hanging around the fluorine atom than they are the hydrogen atom. Why? Because the fluorine, if you were an electron, I'd rather be around the fluorine because it has a lot more protons. So it's a lot more attractive to the electron. So the electrons are going to spend a lot more time hanging around the fluorine. And so what you'll find is that that end of the molecule will be negative compared to the other end of the molecule. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. The more electronegative an atom is, then in a bond, it will get a bigger share of the electrons. Okay, and we can give electronegativity a number. Yes, uh, and looking at this, you'll see that the, the biggest electronegative negativity is your fluorine. Yeah, that is the most attractive to electrons in a bond. It only applies if you're actually in a bond. So looking at the periodic table here, what trends can you see? What trends in electronegativity can you see? And can you explain these trends? Uh, don't worry about the transition elements. Okay, we'll just worry about uh, groups one, two, up to group seven, really. We don't worry about group zero because they don't form any bonds really okay so they don't take part in bonding so forget about them we're not interested in them and basically what's going to happen is that the more protons an atom has then the bigger its electronegativity will be so if we work our way across a period yes for instance lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine you see that the electronegativity gets bigger and that's because the number of protons is increasing. Then if we go down a group, uh, basically what's happening is that there are more and more shells. Hydrogen has got one shell, lithium has got two, sodium has got three, and the more shells there are, that means that the nucleus is further away, and so it will be less attractive. So electronegativity gets less as you go down a group, and then it gets bigger as you go across a period from left to right. And you should recognize that trend and be able to explain it as well. This is a chart which might turn up in an exam and it's electronegativity for different elements against atomic number. You should be familiar with this chart and studying it, you should see that it agrees with what we just talked about on the last slide. Yes, if you look from sodium up to chlorine, the electronegativity is getting bigger. But then as we go down a group, the electronegativity gets smaller. What kind of bond we get? When do we get uh, a covalent bond? Uh, when do we get an ionic bond? And it's all about the difference in electricity. If you've got two atoms, looking at the diagram on the left, if there's no difference between electronegativities, then they're going to share the electrons equally. We'll get an equal share and we will get a pure covalent bond, uh, the electrons shared equally. Now, if there is a difference, a significant difference in electronegativity, then what you'll find is that one of the atoms gets a bigger share of the electrons, 
For example, in hydrogen fluoride, the, the fluorine atom gets a bigger share, and we end up with what we call a polar molecule. If the difference is between 0.4 and 2, we get a polar molecule, and that means that one of the atoms gets a bigger share of the electrons, and we end up with a molecule which has a, a negative end and a positive end. Okay, it's a polar molecule. It has a dipole, which basically means it has a negative end and a positive end. And then lastly, if the difference in electronegativity is greater than two, we get an ionic bond. And that's basically because one of the atoms gets the electrons all of the time. Okay, if the difference in electronegativity is greater than two, you get an ionic bond. So, uh, a pure covalent bond, a, uh, a polar molecule, a dative bond if you like, and then an ionic bond. Not dative, wrong word, sorry. This is an important example of a polar molecule, and that's H2O. Uh, the electronegativity of the oxygen is bigger than the hydrogens. It gets a bigger share of the electrons, and so you end up with a, a negative end, uh, and then these two positive hydrogens, okay? And this is a polar molecule, H2O, and we'll see in another video that these are very important. Okay, H2O. If you want to watch another video, a good video about covalent bonds, then I recommend this one. Yeah, it explains covalent bonds very well. A bit simple, but entertaining.